Hello everybody, thank you for tuning in to the fourth episode of Cup of Tech. Today I'm back on the coffee, nice and warm, kind of need the energy. Um, I'll get into why I need it in a second. Last week I asked you guys what apps I should be getting on my Android phone or what apps you would recommend for iPhones. Pretty good comments come back. Um, a lot of the apps I've kind of already, already discovered as well. So um, simple things, Pulse Newsreader. It's similar to Flipboard if you don't already use Flipboard or, or Pulse. Really good way of getting your RSS feeds in and taking a look at the top stories and things like that. Um, you can subscribe to all your favorite websites including notanalog.com actually. You just click on the RSS link and it's there. Um, other things such as you know the camera app, um, maps of course like Google Maps. I feel sorry for the iPhone people who are going to use Apple Maps um, soon. I don't know how good that's going to be for you but we'll see. Um, and obviously you know Google Chrome and Twitter and Facebook. The simple things. Happy to happy with that. Thank you for those who did comment. All right, so one of the key reasons why I've had quite a large day, not just because of my day job, I actually took the day off today and I went to the CS6 Roadshow, um, hosted by Adobe, obviously. And I was there because I've actually been trialing um, the CS6 suite um, on my computer here and it's, it's really impressive and it's huge. It's so, so big. The amount of applications that there are, it's, it's massive. Now, I use it to edit my videos, including this one. And I realized today how little I actually use of the Premiere software, which is the video editing um, package. Now, some of the things that I learned, most of the, um, not most, a good portion of the people in the rooms today were coming from Final Cut, which is another editing software. Now, one of the things which Adobe sort of caught my attention on is that they realized that their biggest competitor is Final Cut. So what they've done is they've built into Premiere a lot of their uh, functions that people would be look coming from Final Cut and looking for, including keyboard shortcuts. So if you're used to editing in a certain way on in Final Cut, switch over to Premiere and it's going to be the same experience. You can just set, set that in the options. Really cool. Other simple things that I saw or, or heard, the movie Act of Valor. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Really, really good movie. Um, I didn't know that 70% of that film was done on a Canon 5D, which is just an SLR camera. I didn't know. I didn't know that. Um, and most of the editing was done in um, Premiere and After Effects, both um, part of CS6 as well. Really, really cool. Photoshop, for those who don't want to go out and buy Premiere and Photoshop, obviously for different reasons, but Photoshop can now actually do some very basic video editing. Now, when I say very basic, it's still quite, quite good. So for those who want to do a little bit of video editing, just invest in Photoshop to make all your pictures look pretty, and you can do some basic work there as well. Some interesting stuff I learned today. There will be more news shortly. This week, Canon announced their first sort of entry into the, uh, the ILC market or the micro four thirds market, whatever you would call it. Now it's their first sort of very portable SLR style camera. Um, for those who don't know, Nikon have them, um, Sony have them. I, re I reviewed the NEX F3 recently. So it's really cool, basically interchangeable lenses on a compact camera. Now this one from Canon still looks really, really good. They've, they've obviously waited a while to make sure they got it right. Now they say they developed this one alongside the Canon EOS um, 650D, which is a very, very good SLR camera. And it's actually 50% lighter, so it is more lightweight, but same sort of sensor, same um, imaging processor and things like that. So when you look at it, you're thinking, why wouldn't I just buy the this new camera. It's called the EOS M. Um, it's going to come out around October, they believe. Looks really, really cool. I want to get my hands on one, obviously, and uh, bring you a review. So let's wait and see with that. Kogan, um, a company probably most only known in Australia, sorry to the, any international viewers, but something interesting still. They've released a TV um, which is branded with an AFL team, which is a football team in Australia, called Collingwood Football Club. Now, really interesting that they've done this. They've sort of partnered with them and they've called it, you know, the, the Collingwood TV. And it's got, instead of a Kogan symbol, like a Panasonic thing on the front, it's got the Collingwood symbol on the remote. It's got the Collingwood symbol. When you turn the TV on, it's got a big splash screen as well of the emblem and stuff like that. It also comes with, you know, team polo and scarf and hat, just to sort of make you feel like you're part of a team. Really interesting move. I've never seen any company do this before where they've sort of branded or co-branded a product. So interesting to see this. I'm not sure if it's really going to work out. I mean, if the team doesn't, if sorry, if the TV doesn't work well, does it reflect badly on Kogan or on the team? 
I'm, I'm worried that there'll be some some image um, tarnished here. I mean, it, it's people are gonna think of it. Oh, your, your Collingwood TV doesn't work well. It's not. You know what I mean? It's. I'm not sure what's gonna happen with that. I'm not sure if it's the best idea. Kogan aren't probably known for the best quality TVs in the first place. So, for them to do this is kind of a gamble, and and for Collingwood to team up with Kogan for the same reason is kind of a gamble as well. I'm I'm not sure. I I might check one of the TVs out and take a look, but it kind of opens it up. I mean, what other brands would you want to see on a TV or or any other device? Would you like a laptop, which was, you know, with your favorite sports team as well? I I, I don't know. Also this week, a real small piece of news, well not small, it was big in the rest of the world. Um, Apple announced their earnings call for the quarter. It turns out they didn't quite meet all of their targets. One of their targets was iPhone sales. They they projected uh, 28 million or something and only got 24 or something million um, sales, which is unit sales, which is incredible. Um, so it, it is obviously down and one of the key reasons for that obviously is because the Apple is so popular that everyone wants to know about their latest and greatest products. People are holding out and buying an iPhone because they want to get the iPhone 5, even though they don't know when that's coming out yet. So obviously sales go down because there's people waiting. Um, the, the stock market went a little bit crazy as a result. It's, it's crazy what happens in the world just as a result of Apple making this earnings call. They still made a huge profit for the quarter. They still did really well, but the market freaked out because they didn't quite hit their projected targets. Interesting stuff. It's kind of like, it's good to be popular, but at the same time, it did have an impact on their sales because their, their customers, their loyal customers, weren't spending the money. Interesting. Just a quick one on an app that I've been using. It's actually a service, um, a music service from JB Hi-Fi, the electronic retailer. You can download an app for iPhone and uh, Android, and you can also use it just in the browser on your PC. It's just music streaming, so um, there's a huge collection of songs there. I haven't found one which I couldn't find yet. Um, huge selection. The quality is very good. You can stream offline onto your phone as well, so save a playlist for listening to when you don't have connection and so on. It's kind of it's kind of interesting. I've never used or been in love with music streaming before. It's if you're paying for music even though you won't own it, so you pay like a monthly fee and. At the end of that month, you just have unlimited listening to any songs that you like, but you don't own the music. Uh, it's a huge difference to, say, buying music on iTunes and so on. Uh, I'd love to know what you guys think, but this one is good. You get a full month free trial, so please try it. Let me know what you think as well. Just comment below and say yay or nay. Uh, it's a free trial. You can't go wrong. Also, we've just seen two reviews between the last cup of tech, HTC One S and the Jawbone Jambox. The One S, pretty cool product, check out the review. Jambox, did not want to send that one back, just loved it. I'd love for you to see the review on that one as well. It's a, an amazing portable speaker. That's all I can say with that one. Um, my cup is completely bone dry. I would love to know from you guys for next week's show. I mentioned JB Hi-Fi now, there is RDO and there's Mog and so many other music services. What do you do for your music? Are you still buying music off iTunes for, say, two bucks a piece? Or are you starting to use streaming now? Or are you still buying CDs off a shelf? Or are you doing the dodgy and downloading them on, on, online illegally? I'd like to know. I mean, I'm not going to come and arrest you if you are. I'm just interested. So comment below. Tell me where you get your music from and how you enjoy your music. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next week. Bye.